In this video, we're going to talk about deep learning and how we can apply this to cryptocurrency trading. And it's a fascinating topic for me. I can't wait to take you through it. And before we even get into it, I think you're going to be really surprised at how simple this really is. So let's not delay the video. Let's roll the intro and talk about deep learning and cryptocurrency trading. So we're going to talk about deep learning and how do we apply this to cryptocurrency trading and i even mentioned the words simple earlier so how can something like this be simple and i think you're going to be absolutely amazed at how straightforward this really is in fact i'm even going to show you the code that runs a deep learning model that can predict the price of google how interesting is that so we're going to get into that the first thing i wanted to just say very quickly is that this channel has nearly a thousand subscribers I never would have imagined. I think we've got about 988 subscribers. There really has been no marketing for this channel. There was a video on arbitrage when I launched the tool that I paid Facebook to show for like a day. I think that's like the only marketing that's ever been done. I never would have dreamed that up to a thousand people would have been interested in cryptocurrency trading in the way I am and the cryptocurrency and blockchain space, the AI space, etc. like I am. And I just feel really grateful for the community. I'm also very grateful for the people who I'm now speaking with, who are getting in touch with me with their ideas and they've got some great ideas and they're working on some great tools and projects. I just wanted to say a massive well done to you guys and also just gratitude for having you here on the channel. This has never been about growing a massive YouTube channel and to have nearly a thousand subscribers is mind blowing to me. So thank you very much. Now with all that fluffy stuff out the way, all the nice feely stuff out the way. Let's get into deep learning and cryptocurrency trading. So the first thing I want to talk about is the human brain. So in the human brain, we have about 100 billion neurons and connections in the human brain. And when you look at a neuron, if you look at this image over here, this is a good example of what a neuron looks like. It's almost like this tree, right? So you've got these inputs, you've got the stem, and you've got outputs in this neuron. And so the way your brain works is through electronic signals and chemical reactions, etc., through these neurons. Now, interestingly enough, as scientists and mathematicians and physicists have developed the neural networks, which are artificial brains, artificial neural networks, they have actually mimicked the way nature performs. That's how they found that we get the best and most amazing results with deep learning. Now I'm talking about deep learning, machine learning, AI, and I'm throwing these terms around interchangeably, but actually there are differences. You know, deep learning is a subset of machine learning and the way that we use deep learning can be applied to AI, etc., or even machine learning can be applied to AI. And so if you want me to go into depth and do some videos uh, as a light introductory course to data science, machine learning, deep learning, just say so in the comments and I'll be more than happy to do some videos on it. But what I wanted to talk about was look at this neuron over here and let's compare it to what an artificial neural network looks like. So an artificial brain and how this actually works. Well, the first thing I want to talk about before we do that is how does a how does a kid learn how to walk? So when a kid learns how to walk, it has this goal. I, I need to get to mom or dad or whoever. I need to put one foot in front of the other and take steps. And so it gets up and it fails and it falls on its face. And then it adjusts. The next time it gets up, it adjusts. This time it, it said, okay, I leaned too forward. Now, you know, now I need to lean back a little bit more. And then it falls this way. Okay, I leant back too much. And so it constantly adjusts its approach, this child, this fictional child we're talking about is constantly adjusting its approach to learning how to walk. So it's constantly changing what muscles it's using, what signals it's sending to what and where in its brain is learning that. Now, deep learning works exactly the same way. It's like training a child to walk. So if we want to train a machine to learn how to paint Van Gogh paintings, we can. In fact, we've done it. And it uses actually a very, very simple approach. And it's always simple when you know how, right? So here we're looking at an artificial neural network. And you'll see here, I've got this input layer, then I've got these hidden layers, and I've got this output layer. Now picture this is 
the child learning to walk. This is the artificial brain for a robot learning to walk. It works the same way for a robot as it could do for a child or a child's brain. So you have this input layer. Now that could be sensory information. It could be what pressure am I feeling on my toes? What do I see? What do I feel? You know, what is the floor stability like? So there's all this input sensory information that's coming in. And then we have a whole bunch of connections. Now these connections to these neurons, so you see all these connections here, these, these stripes going across. These are connecting neurons together. And all of these neurons are essentially doing mathematical calculations. And they're, they're performing functions and outputs. And so there's an output or what's called an activation function for each of these neurons. And so information goes in, it gets tweaked and, and changed and information gets popped out. And eventually you get to this output layer, which is, you know, put the left foot forward first, then the right fo foot, etc. whatever the output layer is going to be. Now, let's let's take this back from a child walking and talk about cryptocurrency trading, because that's why we're here. That's why I want to apply deep learning, machine learning, etc. to cryptocurrency and what I'm working on right now. Well, imagine what we try to teach a machine to do was to predict if the price of EOS, for example, was going to go up a lot, up a little bit, down a little bit or down a lot in the next one hour. That would be valuable information for a trader. If a trader had 74% chance that EOS's price is going to go up in the next hour, it's very unlikely that that trader is going to place a short position there and then, right? So imagine the power of knowing the probability of, of what the price is going to do next. So for example, we could have input information here. So the, the current price, we could have order book information, we could have information on, I don't know, open interest or sentiment and news and social media and whatever, like all the information that could possibly, all the data we could possibly collect going into this neural network. And then the way a neural network works is it gets to this output, but it works through training the neural network. So what you do with an, a neural network like this is you actually give it a data set and you give it a training data set and a test data set. But I'm just going to talk about the training right now. The training data set has all the inputs and then the expected output. And what the neural network does is it ignores the output until it gets to the end here. So it puts in all these inputs, it predicts an output, and then it compares its predicted output. So you compare the predicted output with the output that it should have been. So if you give it historical information, you know if the price went up in the next hour or down by a lot or by a little. So you can give it that information. It then says, okay, here's what I predicted the price would do. And here's what it actually did. And it goes, whoa, it's like, and at first it will be like the baby falling on its face. It goes, whoa, you know, like I've totally got this wrong. And so what happens is something called backpropagation happens. And backpropagation is essentially where all of the weightings in these connections, what's important and what's not, gets adjusted. And that happens over and over and over. It keeps training itself until it just, until you tell it to stop, basically. You tell it how much you want it to train. In other words, how many steps do I want that baby to take so I know it's going to walk well? You tell it, right? Don't talk to me unless you've done 10,000 steps, kid. You know, this is what we're doing. So, so it's going through that information over and over and over and over again until it adjusts all the weightings and, and, and it creates its own neural network with different strengths on different connections. So if we go back to the neurons over here and the, the way neurons connect in the human brain, let's take a look at this image here. Some connections are going to be thicker than others. In fact, that's how habit forming is done, right? You strengthen the connections in your brain depending on the habits that you form. And so that is exactly what's happening here. Different connections are getting strengthened. I want to play this video for you so you can actually see it happening in action. This is a neural network where inputs are coming in. There's one output in this example. And here's the hidden layer. There's only one hidden layer. Whereas here we had a lot and this is not very relevant. We don't need to go into the details for this video, but just have a look at how this neural network learns. Cool. So we can see that some of the connections here are stronger than others and therefore certain weightings are given to them. But I want to now propose a problem. 
let's say that we want to predict the price of a cryptocurrency. So let's just go to our good friend Google and let's just go, uh, I don't know, uh, Bitcoin price. I know a lot of you traders are going to be shocked that I've gone to Coinbase to look at the price of Bitcoin. But this is just to illustrate a point. If we want to predict price based on historical information, in other words, I want you to predict the price of Bitcoin or EOS or whatever moving based on what the open order book was historically, what the sentiment was historically, what the open interest was historically, etc. I want to give it all that data and I want it to retain that historical information. Well, in this example of this neural network or even this neural network, depending on what's in these neurons, that can't really happen. Well, if we use a standard artificial neural network. So we actually have to use a special kind of neural network called a recurrent neural network. And a long short term memory or an LSTM, recurrent neural network to be specific, in order for it to retain historical information and use that to predict a future outcome. So that's actually what we need to do. If, we, if we're looking to predict price, we need to use that. So if you're enjoying this so far and you're like, whoa, this is actually incredible and fascinating. And I haven't even got to show you the code yet. You're going to be fascinated by how little code there is to do this. If you're enjoying this so far and you want to know more about how to predict the future outcome of things using machine learning, etc., I want you to put in the comments XG boost like this XG boost. I can't write with my mouse. But anyway, XG boost S T. There you go. XG boost. Put that in the comments and I will do a video talking about how Barclays Bank and somebody from Google predicted with 100% accuracy the outcome of was it the World Cup or the Premier League? I can't remember. The guy from Google got 13 out of 15 games right. Barclays got 15 out of 15 using machine learning. So using sports information for predicting the output of a game better than bookmakers do. And there is a tool that's very useful for that called XG Boost, and I will do a video on that if you like. But if you're finding this interesting, then I definitely recommend looking more into neural networks. Go and learn about machine learning A to Z on Udemy. I've done four or five courses now, but the A to Z course is the best course on Udemy. But the point is that you don't only have to use recurrent neural networks to predict price. There's other ways you can potentially do it, and that's what I'm working on right now. That's what I'm investigating. So if we go over to the, the actual code now, right now, there's 137 lines of code on something where I'm working on predicting the price of Google. Like it's it's really straightforward. It's very, very basic. This bit of code basically just looks at the data and it structures the data and this bit of code reports it out. And it's just something very high level before I then apply this to the detail to a lot more data. So, you know, always start simple and then build on your knowledge. So that's what I'm doing. But the actual neural network, so going back over here, this neural network over here uh, and the recurrent neural network, because that's what I'm using, version of this, is here. Like this is, this is the neural network. This is the only code I needed to know. There is less code. Guys, this is important actually. There is less code to build a machine learning model that can predict the probability and outcome of a price in crypto or stocks or whatever than there is code in building a website. And the reason for that is there's a lot of mathematical functions, especially on the LSTM recurrent neural network. There's a lot of mathematical functions, etc., behind this, but I don't need to know it. Someone else has already done that. I'm just importing the library and the library here is called Keras. I'm just importing the library and I'm using that Python library to build my neural network. You, you do not have to be an expert programmer. In fact, I would say to do this, you actually need very like take a basic course in Python programming basic on Udemy and then do do the A to Z machine learning or deep learning course on Udemy. Like those are the two courses and you will be able to do this. It is not difficult. It's not difficult. It's easier to do this than to build a website. Guys, I'm not kidding. This is straightforward. It's really interesting. So once you understand the theory of what's going on and you understand that these neurons are just mathematical functions. And by the way, my maths is terrible. My maths is terrible. Like 
I don't even need to know those functions. I can trade a machine learning model. The work is there. So it's time to get people educated about what's possible. You don't have to follow all the other products being sold to you online, etc. You can investigate stuff yourself. And that's what I want to encourage on this channel. There's no reason why you can't understand machine learning, AI, deep learning. This is taking over our society, culture, our jobs. Like it's important that we understand the world of machine learning, deep learning and AI as well as blockchain. So if you want me to do more videos talking about machine learning, deep learning, AI and applying it to data, like showing you real life examples, etc. Just say so in the comments. I'm more than happy to do it. I really love this stuff. I think it's absolutely mind blowing. But until the next video, take care and talk soon.